So for this part, we're going to jump into the software and step you through the process of how you would actually do this at your facility. And it all starts with the planning phase. We can't get into production without part of the planning. So we're going to just simply open a new drawing. We have a sample drawing here that we use. And once that opens, you can see it's a, this is a PDF. Now we can use any pictorial based drawing, a PDF, a, um, you know, a TIFF, a JPEG, or whatever really you have that's a, a picture type drawing. Um, additionally, we do have the functionality to bring in a 3D model with, uh, with the PMI data. So we have that as well. But from here, it's just a regular 2D print, um, uh, nothing special about it. We're going to click on our auto balloon button, our single click auto balloon. There are options here for multiple pages and you can turn off basic and reference. But for this case, in this demonstration, we'll just hit OK and let it run through the process. Now the proprietary OCR takes over, optical character recognition. And it's looking at this print, specifying um, what is a, a GD&T and what are dimensions and analyzing that entire thing. So you can see that took about 15 seconds and the entire print is now ballooned. But even more importantly, if I look down here in what we call our bill of characteristics, all the information, information has already been extracted and populated in the database. This is all in the database real time. Nominal information, tolerances, the characteristic themselves, what it is, the drawing zone that it was, um, uh, that the dimension is located in, all that information was all um, extracted in that first 15 seconds. So now we have our information and we can uh, also acquire additional information off the print. For example, here's our material. We can come over here and click our material button and simply select it by box selecting it like this. And if we look to the right over here, we can see that our material has now been populated. We can check on our little pencil right here and add additional information like material codes, spec numbers, cert numbers, supplier list. There's a pull down for that and you can add supplier just by simply clicking this add new. Um, a lot of our customers come over here to files and they'll include a certification for that material. And once I hit save and close, now that certification and the information is all stored in the database and associated with this part record. But we also have a couple creature comforts uh, that I'll point out to you as well. For example, let's say it missed a dimension, for example. It's, we don't claim to be perfect. It is going to miss some every once in a while. Um, so if we have this, and let's say this was a really busy print. Well, this print can also, um, uh, it, it's hard to, excuse me, it's hard to identify sometimes some of the characteristics it's missing. We have this function over here called whiteout dimension. If we click on that, it whites out everything that it did get. So now we can easily see features that it did not get. And if it did not get something, we have a manual clipping tool right here with the little scissors. And then it's simply a box select. We'll box select it just like this. As soon as I let go, it's automatically parsing it and I analyzing what it is and populating it over here. Uh, we we do will go toe to toe with anyone for our OCR technology and how it analyzes GDNT. So please feel free to test us out on that and uh, of anyone else as well. So it has all of that information and we can turn off the what well once we click away. Now we can see that it has all the dimensions and we can turn off the whiteout and now we have all of our dimensions listed. And now we can come over here. Now we're out of sequence, right? Because we deleted the number six and then we added another one so it doesn't realize it. It's not going to automatically populate number six because it doesn't know if it should or not. So we can simply come up here to renumbering and it renumbers it, puts it back in order, um, just like we'd like. And by the way, for those machine shops that are listening that have to uh, convert from inch to metric or metric to inch, sometimes you'll get a, a metric print, for example, and then need uh, it to be converted to inch out on the shop floor. And the magic of 25.4 on a calculator is revealed. 
right? We also have this little convert button right up here. You simply click on this and it converts the entire print over to the other unit, whichever one you're using, it'll just use the other one. So this is a very, very simple way um, to, and you can print this out as well, um, to communicate the alternate dimensions um, for the shop floor or for your customer if you need to. Now, so you're aware there, you can change the number of decimal places in this as well. So that's all customizable. So wanted to show you those um, couple features. Uh, in addition to that, also wanted to point out that if there is a dimension, like this is a plus plus dimension, for example, we can look over here and see that it actually pulled the plus plus tolerance correctly. But if there is not a dimension listed like this one, it will pull it from a tolerance table and the tolerance table that's located here. It's predefined and then it uses it. But again, if there is a dimension, it will override that. Please visit HiQA to request a demo and learn more.